like yeah. I can smell all of the smoke All that love and positivity, that shit is a joke I should dead them all, my heart ski down slopes When you the piggy bank, everybody wanna see you broke, bro Me and snakes don't lip lock I don't think the feet look good on me like flip flops I know if I spit it, it belongs in the ziplock They know I'ma kill them all they hear in this TikTok Your time is up where there's fire, you see the smoke, yeah. I know liars, I seen them fall, yeah. I'm Austin Glendo, uh, here on the episode of The Official Visit. I'm uh, joined by Miller, two of Millard South's, uh, you know, top players, and that's uh, linebacker slash safety slash wide receiver slash athlete slash QB slash probably be punting next game or something. Uh, that's Brock Murtaugh, and then we have, uh, you know, cornerback slash wide receiver, you know, another slash athlete, uh, Gavin Nunnally. Um, how are you guys doing today? Good. Good, yeah. Good, man. All right, so, I mean, the first question I got to ask, you, you guys got, like, a free period? You guys skipping class? Are you yeah, guys... yeah, yeah. We, right. got, we got a free period right now, so. All right, I didn't, I didn't want to yeah, I hope. You guys skipping class, then – no coach wizard yeah. i was running so yeah kid can't be doing that yeah no she had he'd have you he'd have me running what are you talking about man i'll be out there running gasters with y'all yeah awesome man so you know you guys are at school how how's school been so far you guys are a month in now how's that been going pretty good i mean easy yeah, yeah. we only have like four or five classes a day i mean like each semester and it's like out of eight so we got a lot of off blocks so yeah easy. Right. guidance counselor looking out for you guys senior year huh yeah, <laughs> senior a senior schedule looking yeah. kind of nice, sweet man. So you know while we're on the topic of schools, uh, you know we'll kind of talk talk about recruiting a little bit first. Um, you know we'll go with Gavin. Um, you know for our viewers or audience that may not know, Gavin, you are committed to University of St. Thomas. Uh, they are an up and coming you know D one school with a lot. They're a very promising school. Um, would you mind kind of telling us what drew you to uh, St. Thomas? Uh, I mean, when I went up there on a visit in uh, the fall, the coaches, I, I really like the coaches. They're very nice. Um, the campus is in Twin Cities, Minnesota. I mean, there's a lot to do there. Um, and just coming from D3, playing with D3 kids in the D1 level, mm -hmm. going seven and four, I think it was, around there. It's pretty good for your first year in D1. So, yeah. you know, they have a, a lot to come from, too, especially with a new recruiting class. So I hope I can uh, be a contributing factor to that. Nice. Yeah, and, it, like, from what I've seen, it looks like, you know, St. Thomas has been hitting Nebraska pretty hard on this recruiting trail uh, or recruiting circuit. How, you know, were the other guys in that, you know, we have Brandon – or not Brandon, uh, Brant. Uh, well, I'm trying to think off the top of my head. Uh, can't think off the top of my head, but we got quite a few Nebraska guys out there. Uh, you know, did you form relationships with them? Did they kind of help you in your decision? You know, that those relationships at all, or, or are you just like, all right, you know, like just excited to play with these guys? It doesn't. It didn't really like, affect my decision, but I mean, it's pretty cool knowing uh, Brand Pickerel. We used to play on me and Brock actually used to play on the same football team as him, uh, Junior Patriots. So our uh, Pee Wee. So. Um, it's cool knowing that I could play with another player that I've played with in the past. So yeah, Brock, uh, you know, you have, you know, you haven't made your commitment yet, but you yep. do have quite a quite a list of offers. You know, D one offers. You know, from the Ivy League, it's Harvard, Brown. Uh, then you have uh, Air Force, Valpo, and then South Dakota State, just to name a few. And you also have St. Thomas one. Uh, is there is there a possibility there of a little? Uh, uh, yeah, there's, yeah, there's definitely a possibility. I know me and Gavin have had lots of talks, um, but yeah, still, still haven't made a decision yet. So, yeah, definitely. which which uh, schools have, uh, which schools and coaches have kind of been, you know, coming at you pretty pretty hard. Yeah, so you know, South Dakota State, St. Thomas, Air Force, you know, the schools that offer me that pretty much been they've been talking to me the most, and I still got a couple of schools. I went to Western Illinois. Um, Last week, uh, talking to Eastern Illinois, you know, so a couple other schools that kind of, you know, waiting on, you know, a couple more games. My senior film, I broke my rib two weeks ago, so 
I've been out the last two weeks, but coming back this week. So, um, you know, I'm going to put a, another highlight tape together in the next couple of weeks and then uh, try and make a decision after that. Yeah, nice, nice. No, that's good. That's good to hear. You know, they all, they're all staying in communication with you, you know, sometimes, especially like you said, after an injury and you miss a game or two, you'll see coaches start to drop off a little bit. But, you know, that's awesome. They must have some real interest in you. Uh, you want to talk about maybe this, those uh, Ivy League offers? Is you know, are is school a bit you know a big yeah. factor for you and your decision? Yeah, for sure. You know, my parents are both educators, so you know it's kind of something that you know my family takes a lot of pride in. You know, just academics in general. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so just to get those, um, you know, them offering me was really a, uh, you know, I was really thankful for that, and it was a really cool to have that. So yeah, you mentioned you know education being. Uh, important for you you know you guys are seniors so you guys you know aside from going on to play college ball you guys are going to be college students uh have you guys you guys have you guys given thought as to like what you would like to pursue as far as like a degree you know uh interest outside of school uh, anything like that um for me i just want to do anything that will help me get into like coaching okay. i want to be a coach but like i'll probably do like a ga job like uh, at a college, mm -hmm. so I'm gonna do college coaching. I don't really want to teach in high school level because usually, if you want to coach high school, you have to teach. Yeah, so I just want to do like a get a coaching job that's like college level. Yeah, that's so. good. I feel like you, you kind of you know being on the team as well. You kind of have a little bit. I don't want to say accelerate or you know clear path, but a little bit in an accelerated path. You know, yeah. grad assistance and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Uh, Brock, how about yourself? Uh, I really, you know, I change my mind all the time. So, uh, I, I don't, I haven't really, you know, had a, you know, clear vision of what I want to do. I mean, probably something in the business, um, field, something like that. I've also thought about, you know, maybe being a fighter. Um, so, you know, like I guess I changed my mind a billion times. So we'll see. Yeah, uh, that's perfectly fine. You know, people, you know, people change their minds. You know, I changed my, my major when I was in college. So, you know, it's definitely not anything, you know, you have to have. It's just you know, interesting just to hear what you guys have, you know, as far as uh, pursuing outside of football. So we'll okay. dive in a little bit into Millard Southball. Um, so far, you guys are at, you guys are at two, two and three. You guys had the opening win um, at Millard West, you know, rival Millard West. And you guys had a little slide there and you guys got back in the win column this week. Um you guys tell me you guys want to you know maybe check in how you guys are feeling about the season how you guys are feeling going into this week um i mean going to this week we got lincoln east i feel like it's also a, a big factor of our wins is having our big i mean we have leadership in our seniors all the way around but uh mm -hmm. also back in cam cole you know yeah like a leader obviously a pretty good athlete too so he definitely helps us contribute to our wins um so, yeah. Yeah. yeah uh, you know, we lost that one to Elk South, uh, second game. You know, a couple plays we would like to, you know, change over, but it's something you can't, you know, you can't do now. So, yeah, two and three. Um, you know, Lincoln East is a good team. Uh, you know, we got to play our best ball if we want to beat them, but it definitely helps having Cam back. Uh, like you said, he's a great leader. Um, you know, guys look up to him and guys, you know, so, uh, yeah, it's gonna it's gonna be a fun one Thursday night. They're a good team. Yeah. So you, you guys both kind of touched on you know having Cam back. Uh, you know for people that you know are watching and may not know, uh, you guys are starting quarterback Cam Kojul. Yep. Uh, he he went to go play uh, international baseball for a couple weeks, correct? And then you know he's back now. In the meantime, uh, Brock, you you subbed in at quarterback for two games. Yeah. Yeah. Uh. Would you mind going uh, talking a little bit about what that was like, you know, being under yeah. center and uh, preparing for that? Yeah, definitely. You know, it was, I've never played quarterback before. I mean, I played it one game my freshman year, and uh, it turns out it wasn't the spot for me. So <laughs> I had to make a, you know, position change. That's when I really found out defense was, you know, the right fit for me. But uh, we knew Cam was going to go out of town probably early August. And that's when, you know, coach was like, hey, you got to start getting some QB reps. So I had to learn, you know, I knew what I was doing at my position at the receivers, but like learning, you know, as a whole new offense, I had to learn everything. So um, definitely helps now when I'm at receiver, but you know, playing quarterback also a lot more, you know, safety and, and linebacker, just knowing like, all right, if I show this, then as a quarterback, I think this is open. So 
you know, also helps me kind of like bait things um, a little bit better. I mean, the first game I was at quarterback open South. That was a fun one. Um, second game when I was at Miller North, that's uh, I broke my rib that game. I early, real, really early in the game. So I uh, played through that and that's when we, you know, a tough loss that one, but you know, we have a, we had a kid step up that third against Gretna when I was out. His name's Jet Tamala. Definitely going to be a guy that's going to be uh, talked about for a while, that freshman class. You know, he stepped in and did a great job. And you know, now that Cam's back, he, you know, he won't be seeing the field as much, but, you know, he definitely is getting a lot of, uh, you know, great, you know, he can see what Cam does and follow him. So yeah. next year when you know, he's up, he'll be ready to go. Nice. So then uh, when you when you found out you might, you know, you were gonna probably, probably going to take those reps at quarterback, did you – at all, you know, hit a, you know, a former uh, wide receiver turned quarterback from last year, uh, war number 12, did you maybe yeah. ask him for advice? Say, hey, man, uh, what did you do last year to prepare for this? Because he, he went through the same transition as well. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Uh, you know, Gage is one of my good friends. Um, even, you know, even in the camp time when I was like, yo, you know, what do you think I should do? Like, you know, what's some advice, you know, going into that Lindenwood camp? That's when he kind of like blew up. So, you know, I asked him for some advice. He gave me stuff. It's kind of been like that all year. You know, he was, I, in my opinion, the best player in the state. I know a lot of people can all say that. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I definitely asked him. Uh, you know, he played quarterback a little bit. You know, he was always that. He played a little bit his junior year. Mm -hmm. So, I definitely had to ask him a lot of questions because I was just kind of coming from, you know, catching the ball every day to like, oh, I got to throw a ball now, but. Yeah, he definitely was a great leader. He gave me some great, you know, points to look for and stuff to do in the game. So yeah, that's definitely you know, always good. Always good to fall back on you know the homies real quick mm -hmm. when you have questions. Uh, so then Gavin, you know, with Brock moving over to quarterback for a couple games, you know, that took that took a receiver out of your guy. I I consider you two, you know, some of the best receive one of the better receiver duos, you know, in Class A and certainly in the state. Uh, you know, that, you know, jumped you up a little bit, you know, in that receiver group. How do you as, you know, the leader of that group, you know, with some really young dogs, you know, some dogs on the, in that, you know, some young guys in there, uh, what do you do to say, all right, let's let's step it up. You know, Brock's going to need our help at quarterback. He's going to make sure, you know, we got to make sure, uh, you know, we're ready, we're prepared. Uh, was, you know, what you was there anything behind the scenes that you were doing with those young guys? I mean, no, nothing crazy. I, I say that our coach – uh, coach Wallace, our receiving coach, he definitely helps us uh, get over some of the adversities that we face in a game. He's a great coach. He's played high level of football. I mean, when he was in college, so he knows what he's talking. He knows what he's doing. And then, obviously, me and Brock have a little bit of a, a little bit of a, a good bond. Yeah. So he knows that uh, if I get the ball, I can make something happen. Yeah. There you go. That's awesome. All right, so then, you know, kind of shifting gears a little bit, uh, jumping back to your guys' matchup this week against Lincoln East. Um, I'm sure you guys probably, you know, know that you get, there's a there's a pretty big name on that other team, uh, receiver Malachi Coleman. Um, you know, Gavin, is it, would it be safe to assume you might be tasked with, you know, a little bit, uh, you know, guarding him or covering him for most of the game? Obviously uh, not trying to spill no secrets about your guys' game plan or nothing, but. Uh, you know, a little bit of insight on what you know your headspace going into that matchup. I mean, it's gonna it's gonna be fun. I mean, happy to play against a top talent. Uh, I'm not gonna say too much. Obviously, we know he's a great athlete, but uh, I'm looking forward to it. You know. Yeah. So, talk to me about you know when you guys are you get we talked about when you guys play together on offense or play with one another on offense. Uh, talk about what that's like on defense. You know, communicating and you know having you know being the leaders yeah. of that defense. You know, me and Gavin, you know, we always try and get on the same side, you know, if it's fits in practice or the game, you know, we just, like you said, we got that connection going, um, you know, it definitely helps. He's got a good, you know, football IQ. And so we can definitely talk stuff, you know, if something goes wrong in the game, you know, just like that, you know, like you said, the good bond we have, we can fix something like that. Like, you know, if his guy runs into mine and we have to, you know, call a switch or something like that, um, you know, we can just do that because, you know, we've been playing together our whole life. So, um, yeah, it's definitely fun playing with Gavin. You know, we give each other a lot of crap all the time. But, you know, he, he's, he's one of my favorite teammates to play with. So, yeah. And you, 
one one thing you know you won't be lacking or one thing you have just an excess amount is you got speed man you got uh crazy speed and then you're I believe you meddled in state uh for the four by one correct yep. all right uh talk to me a little bit about you know what do you do you know to because i'm sure i'm sure you probably already had some of that speed but i'm sure you also probably train on that speed and you know along with everything else what kind of what kind of off-season uh training or what kind of uh stuff do you do to you know make sure you're you're running that top performance well i mean i think it's a little combination of both i mean i used to do uh loyalty training and bronchin training that used to get me up and going. I think I did that until like during a sophomore year. So that helped a lot, but also, I mean, lifting, you know, lifting makes you a more explosive athlete. Mm -hmm. The more you lift, I mean, the faster you're going to be tend to be, you know? So, I mean, that's a big role into it. Yeah. I mean, yeah. So, and then, you know, you guys, you know, I'm, I see teams all over the place, you know, they post their, or, you know, teams or guys, you know, they post their weight room videos and, you know, it's always pretty hype. How, how hype does it get in that Patriot weight room? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it, it, it gets hyped in there, especially when you got, uh, you know, we got Lance Rucker. And, oh, man. You know, when you talk about throwing weight around, Lance is the dude, I mean. What's he pushing, think, man? In the summer, I – yeah, I mean, he was going rep after rep, so he didn't really get a full recovery time. Yeah. But he hit five and a quarter, and that was easy. It went for six and almost had it. And the whole – everyone in the weight room was uh, watching that one. That was definitely one of the hypest moments yeah. he's gotten in there. So, yeah. Dang, I can't imagine, man. He's, he's a freak, dude. You watch yeah. him play, and he's just yeah. a monster. Who, who, who's the who's the guy that we wouldn't we wouldn't think of when we think like weight room monsters? But who's who's one of those guys that just goes in there and tears it up? Gavin. Gavin, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Kind of, what, what what are your numbers looking like? You you know. Uh, I mean, my squats around four hundred five. Okay. Um, and then bench. Well, I think it was maybe like two sixty five, two seventy five. Yeah, he had two seventy five when we were lifting together. Casual, then, casual 275. Nice. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, yeah. Awesome, yeah. Man. Sweet. So then, uh, you know, sw switching subjects, uh, you guys at Miller South, you guys are, you know, under the a first year head coach. Uh, that's Coach Wisdom. Um, you know, he's just, he's, you know, from Lexington. So, you know, I'm always rooting for Coach, coach Wisdom, you know. Uh, well, what's it like playing for him and what, you know, how is that, you know, what's he been like, you know, as your coach, I guess? Uh, honestly, he's a great coach. I mean, he knows what he's talking about. He's uh, our offensive coordinator, so he doesn't really do – he doesn't do anything with us for defense. But mm -hmm. for offense, he's like an offensive mastermind, I would say. He knows all your route schemes, all your – what's going to work on what coverage and – what's going to work here, what's going to work there, you know, he knows what he's doing. And, yeah. Uh, it's obviously good knowing that we have a dude that knows what he's talking about on offense because yeah. that gets us to drive the ball down the field on certain mm -hmm. defenses. Yeah, he uh, he's a freaking mastermind. I, I had to go in and watch film with him when I was, you know, doing quarterback stuff and, you know, the stuff now. And I'm like, what the heck? Like, it's like, all right, you look here, then you look back there, it's going to be wide open. Like, in that Oakland South game, um, you know, Elkhorn South is a great defense, and, you know, we kind of picked them apart pretty much. You know, we have a receiver, unfortunately. He, he's going to be out for the year, his first time playing. Uh, Austin Trotter, oh, uh, I think know. he went for, like, 115. Oh, dang, you know, it was just, you know, I would I would come – so I was playing defense. I'd come off the offense. He'd be like, all right, look at this play. You know, look at the safety, see what he does, and then if not, it'll be open. I mean – Mm -hmm. Exactly how he said it, and I, I had the easy job, just throw it out there. Yeah, and, you know, receivers, you know, like he said, Coach Wallace, um, he gets he gets his right, and you know, he knows how he's played before. He knows at the highest level, so you know, I just had to get it there, and the receivers were making plays every time. Yeah, nice. You know, that's that. You know, especially like you know, with the transition or with you know what you had to go through, you know, learning the quarterback position. I'm sure. Having, you know, football mind like that was probably just super helpful for you. Um, so let me see here. So I'm kind of take us into 
Yeah, you want to get Cam Kozo? I know. Cam Kozo, shoot. Yeah, let's see what's good. All right. He's a great guy, though. He's he's a definitely, definitely a humble right. giant. Right. I like him. Yeah. Come <laughs> here. Let's see what he's got to say. Oh, what's up? QB. He text me. <laughs> what is up, man? What's up? How are you? Good, man. Good. Uh, you know, uh, it looks like you're, it looks like we got a special guest uh, with us today. Um, QB one, Cam Kozel. How how you feeling, Cam? Coming back? You're back in the lineup now. What what what's how you feeling? Feeling great. Just having great practices, and it feels great to be back with the team. And um, throwing the ball feels good. Around the ball feels good. Everything's feeling good right now. That was nice. How was your trip? It was amazing. It was a great experience, you know, um, down in Florida for three weeks with Team USA. Um, we ended up winning a gold medal, so that was that was a once-in-a-lifetime experience. Um, but it's nice to be back a little bit to reality right now with school and um, football and everything. Definitely. Uh, I guess, you know, just impromptu, how how you feeling? Uh, you know, you're committed to – you're considered one of the top baseball prospects committed to Vanderbilt. Uh, you know, what, what, what drew you to Vanderbilt? You know, how excited are you to, you know, get out there and ball out? Yeah, so, I mean, Vanderbilt was – it was an easy decision for me um, when we laid kind of everything out. And um, once I took all my official visits and um, to all my other schools and then took um, my official at Vanderbilt, it was an easy decision um, with the people there and the environment that it's in and um, everything set up there for you to succeed. And then, I don't know, I, a lot of people didn't want me to play football, but – I figured you can't live you can't live life scared, so you yeah. gotta go out and do what you want. And I wanted to play football and be with my friends. Yeah. So that's what I ended up doing, and I'm glad I'm doing it right now. We have a lot of a lot of injuries happening on the team right now, so knock on wood. Yeah. One of those doesn't happen to me, but yeah. Um, I was just finding to go out and compete with the guys and kind of get away from baseball for a couple of weeks. Um, once football is over, then full full force baseball and getting ready for the spring season go win a state championship with uh, Miller South and then get ready for the draft and if the draft doesn't go how we want it then get ready for summer league and then off to fall camp with Vanderbilt so staying busy awesome all right and yeah time for one more quick question yep I'm, I'm here all right first and goal or not first and goal third and goal four seconds left you got broad you got Gavin Who's getting? Who's getting? The, who's getting you the dub? Definitely bra. <laughs> oh, okay. Definitely, definitely bra. Oh, oh. Did you see him punch right there? Because he knows that if he said Gavin, I would hit him. <laughs> got, that was kind of a little biased answer. If I don't throw the ball to Brock, he gets really mad. Yeah. <laughs> All right, man. The ball to me in open space, though. That's the thing. Yeah. Yeah. Get, get, Gavin. Yeah, Gavin's Gavin, just fast. Open field, yeah. Yeah. open field kind of play out to Gavin. All right, I got you, man. All right. Well. Or Lance Rucker. Lance Rucker always catches. Yeah. That is not, or no Grant Rankin. Great Rankin can catch the ball too. Yeah, there's no there's no wrong answers there. Um, are you dishing class two or you got free period? Yeah, he, he's dishing. I'm an open block. I was already in the library, but who's this counselor man? Right here. Who's this counselor man? Shout out the counselor again. You guys, this nice schedule. You guys ending the day. Yeah. Awesome open block. Yeah. <laughs> the athletes. Yeah. All right, man. Well, yeah, if you want to keep hanging around, you know, I just got a couple more questions, and then that's probably it. It's up to you, so. I'll just sit right here with Brock. <laughs> All right. So then, you know, I guess now I got I got three Patriots here, and I got another opinion or another voice. So, uh, so quick question, you know, it's game day. You know, hours still kick off. What, what's the vibe? What's the vibe like in, you know, Patriots locker room? You know, what you guys bump in? Who's who's the person to go up there and you know make that that hype speech get the boys riled up? Uh definitely not Cam to make the hype speech. <laughs> um, yeah, it's kind of a mixture of both. Uh, you know, we got the locker room; it's just bumping music. I mean, you can hear that from across the whole school. I'd say. Yeah. Uh, you know, guy, like I don't. That's not really how I like to get ready. So we have the lecture hall. So we go in there. Um, you know, just sitting there, sitting the piece. There's usually like ten guys in there, and you know, just put the AirPods in. You know, I usually watch a little Netflix or some YouTube or something just to relax and then uh, get ready for the game. 
Yeah. What are you guys? What are you guys listening to before the game? You guys going? Don't listen to some some hard stuff. I'm a big, I'm a big classical guy. Oh yeah, so like, like Beethoven and that sort of stuff. <laughs> I don't know. It kind of calms me and calms my nerves and everything. So that's what I like. There you go. I mean, I only listen. I listen to during game days. We really just listen to like some crap. Yeah, something that's gonna get you get you going. Some baby, some. Some young boy, each guy. Yeah. Yeah, young yeah. boys go when I want to get high, but classical yeah. music, Beethoven is always good. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Quick question. You guys sitting at two and three. You guys still have very much the rest of your season in your hands. Uh, you know, your fate is still very much in your hands. What do you guys have to do to make sure, you know, you lock that up, you lock, you know, from here until the end of the regular season, you guys are dialed in, locked in, and ready to clinch that playoff spot, uh, you know, by the time you guys, by the time that kicks off. No, we just kind of got to take it one week at a time. Um, this week, we kind of talked about this week being the big um, district championship, I guess you could say. Um, us the Lincoln East. Mm-hmm. Um, we just got to win this week and then um, beat Columbus and then have a huge win against West Side and then um, just take care of business since Lincoln High. But just take it one day at a time, one week at a time. Don't get ahead of ourselves. Yeah. Yeah. Or, you know, it's Class A football. There's great players on every team. Anything can happen. I mean, that's why football is the greatest sport there is. That's not true. It's 100% true. We <laughs> might have to kick him out. Kick him out if he keeps acting like that. But, you know, week, week by week, anything can happen. You can catch a team, you know, if they're having a bad week or, you know, stuff just goes wrong. You, you never know. I mean, look at us last year, number one seed, falling. So, you know, anything happens. It's football. Yeah. One thing I keep telling pe- or asking people is if they have, you know, anybody, any coach, uh, any person that they would like to thank, uh, you know, I'll give you guys the opportunity to do so just because in life we don't really take those opportunities to thank those people, uh, right. important people to us. Uh, so, you know, take this time, give a shout out to whoever has helped you along the way, give them thanks. Uh, yeah. So or to you guys. Uh, personally, I mean, I, I like to think like all my the trainers I've worked with over the time, you know, loyalty training, Bronson Marsh. Um, they obviously helped me become a better athlete over time, and it really showed. And then uh, obviously anybody that's coached me, uh, whether that's at a football camp or um, like our Patriots coaches, like Coach Wiz, Coach Wallace, uh, Coach Williams. I mean, everybody contributes to me getting better, so I really appreciate it. Appreciate them taking their time to uh, helping us get better. Yeah, like you said, you know, there's been, you know, we played together our whole life. We've had great coaches our whole life. Um, you know, I'd like to thank my uh, speed coach, Chris Slack. Um, he's in Lincoln. He trains a lot of Nebraska guys. He's been a great mentor for me. Um, you know, someone I look up to, and he's made me a way better athlete. I'd also like to thank uh, Coach Wallace. Um, you know, he's our freshman coach four years ago. Um, you know, he just kind of, takes guys under his wing. He does stuff the right way. Um, he's another great role model. You know, guys want to be like him. Uh, and, you know, now he's coaching with us. You know, so it's great working with him every day again. And then I'd like to thank my dad. Dad's been my biggest um, supporter and biggest on my developmental side, especially with baseball. And then everything to do with football has been Coach Fife. Coach Fife's a real one. He's been there since day one. <laughs> He's, best, he's talking about Riker Five, if you remember. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. a QB. Best career. quarterback coach in the Metro, not even a question about it. Super relatable. Um, he should have started with Tommy Armstrong Jr. in Nebraska. He's just he's just a great guy to be around, great coach. Always in the booth helping us out, reading plays. And I hope he gets a job at the next level. But if he doesn't, Miller South's very lucky to have him. And I'm very lucky to have him. Great. Awesome, man. Great to hear, you know. Uh, yeah, like I said, you, you know, I just wanted to give you guys the opportunity. Like I said, sometimes you know, life life moves fast, and, you know, we kind of take those people we, we're thankful for, you know, a little for granted. So being able to say those things, uh, you know, I'd like to give the opportunity to you guys. One question, Cam, what, what's your beef with social media, man? Beef with social media? I just got Instagram. Oh, you did? All right. Cause hey, I, you got to shout me out, okay? He doesn't need a shout out. He's got like... No, you need to shout me out already. still. We're trying to blow up on this thing. Yeah, no, yeah. 
No, I've actually I just exceeded my time limit for today, but <laughs> yeah, by so I said by myself. But you know, it's it's doing pretty good. You know, I got a couple followers. There's good stuff on here, man. I was just watching some dudes, some dudes from like India building like a house with like twigs and I know, it's sick. That. Yeah. no, I was just I kind of thought of it as like <laughs> And it still is like I obviously I live it myself, and I'm yeah. not I'm, I'm not on it. But I don't know. I just kind of thought it was a distraction. It's, yeah. it's a way to be different from everybody, and um, I got this mainly for it wasn't for myself. It was for some reasons that some marketing reasons and some money yeah. going to the next level and start That's building sort of what you call a brand. Yeah, so, there you go. There's uh, other people going into it other than myself. You just wanted to post his girlfriend. <laughs> yes. I'm not posting my girlfriend. Yeah. Well, I'll have to give you that shout. Like I said, I, I was just wondering because I remember right, there was like a couple articles we had you in. I like, spent like 30 minutes trying to find you. I was like, there's no way this guy's going to D1 school and have. There you go. That's going to be one of the shorts, one of the little clips I make. That's going to be it. So everybody go follow you. Nice. All right, <laughs> all right fellas. Well, that's all I have. Uh, you know, I'll be, I will actually be there at the game on Thursday for, for Lincoln East. Let's go. Um, let's, let's see what's up. Let's ball out. Um, yeah. But I appreciate you guys' time. Appreciate you guys. Appreciate you guys. You know, coming on Cam as well, making guest appearance. So, of course, uh, you know, keep at it, keep grinding, stay healthy, and you know, go Pats. Yep. Yep, sure. Patriots. Thank you. Thank you. From all these souls, it's them been a good year. My tires don't leave the road, yeah. Uh. <laughs> Are they serious? I seen liars that testified under oath I hear Rappers not living out what they wrote, my peers I to be studying, taking notes How you hate me to the core when I keep your ass afloat I put pressure on they pencils They look at my life and draw the stencil One move I can rearrange your mental I am so unstable, look what I got into they